All right, happy book club day. As you can see, it's the lady, it's the ladies of the Grand Life Network, and we have taken it up a notch and dove into the metaverse. And if you guys know me or any of the uh, ladies that I'm connected with, then you probably know that this is where we spend like I want to say 50% of our time because I'm not gonna say 100, like 50 50, we physical to digital. So, any chance we get, we are diving into the metaverse, especially the spatial metaverse, which is our favorite and this is where we connect so as you can see this is where women meet up in the metaverse so this is usually where we have like our um moms meet up on mondays and you guys see we already got the wine on deck we've got gardens we got a hot tub back there um our lovely mama zay just had an amazing amazing lesson about um raising your own chickens and all that you can do with that but today we are going to be talking about our book of the month which is sapiens a a brief history of humankind. Um, so let me get right in. So our focus for today is the cognitive revolution. And that starts with the Big Bang. And now we've all heard of the Big Bang Theory. And what I really enjoyed about this book so far, and this book was recommended by actually Barack Obama. <laughs> Barack Obama said this is one of his favorite books that really shifted his mindset. And that's what made me want to put this on the list like, oh, someone like Barack Obama saying they shifted their mindset. This is one of those books that we need to be reading to shift our mindset. And I definitely understand why, because when you understand I love looking at life itself, nature, and using those as the proof and examples on how we should, you know, kind of monitor our lives and, and what the future holds. So diving right into the book, he starts to talk about that Big Bang Theory. And it's talking about how matter and energy are formed, atoms, and then how those turn into molecules, and then how these form organisms. So with that, there are also three revolutions that make up human history. The cognitive revolution, the agriculture revolution, and the scientific revolution. And now he stated that the scientific revolution might end something and start something new. And I definitely can see how that can transition, especially when I see like people talking about digital immortality and digital twinning and all of these different um, new buzzwords. I want to say I can definitely again see how this digital era is, you know, going to be an evolution of mankind and humankind. And that's what we are talking about today. Evolution. And our question of the day is actually, what does it take? for you to evolve. And as I dive more into the lesson right now, you will start to understand that more, but I'll, I'll give uh, everybody a chance to say, what does it take for you to evolve? And why I really liked following up with this book is because last month we just talked about becoming with Michelle Obama. And our last discussion was, what are you becoming and what do you refuse to become? And so I think, you know, following that up with today, what is what does it take for you to evolve? We, we get in somewhere, you know, we add in those tools to our tool belt. So the most important thing to know about prehistoric humans is that they were insignificant animals with no more impact on the environment than gorillas, fireflies, and jellyfish. Now, when um, the author Yuval Noah Harari uh, was talking about like again humans in this prehistoric time it was amazing visualizing this and he talked about the structure of evolution and how each species comes from one patriarch which has one of the close which was one of the closest guarded secrets now again think about our last lesson with becoming and how we talked about how knowledge of self is so important how you have to understand yourself by understanding your mother and your dad and understanding their mother and their dad and every lineage before that as deep as you can go to really understand your roots so think about it as if you can go all the way back to the beginning and that's gonna trip y'all out maybe you knew maybe you didn't know but allegedly <laughs> where our lineage goes all the way all the way all the way back to is supposed to be chimpanzees right those are supposed to be our cousins per se so the theory goes that there was one chimpanzee grandmother and she had two daughters one grew up to raise the nation of chimpanzees and the other grew up that grew humans now 
the different ways that men evolved um, dif did differ also from different regions that they evolved in, okay? And a lot of the things, especially when they were talking about um, this part, it's not like the model that they show where it's like one type of human turned to the next, you know, where it's like, oh, the monkey turned to the human and then you the human turned to the caveman, the caveman turned to this next. No, these were three different species of humans. That's why you hear like, oh, the Neanderthals or the Homo sapiens and the different kind of species of mankind as well. And why that was uh, important was because um, there was interbreeding or there wasn't really interbreeding. And then we kind of go into like the um, breeding theory and the replacement theory because again, there was these different groups of people. And so to kind of take it back a, a step here when it comes to us and the chimpanzees and what kind of makes that different is actually our brains so that was the big switch there is when the, that grandmother chimpanzee air quote air quote air quote had the two um you know granddaughters one had a bigger brain and that's where humans or homo sapiens came about and why this started to matter is because they had these bigger brains so they needed a lot more food and and they needed a lot more energy or needed a lot more time to sleep. So humans or homo sapiens started spending a lot of time searching for food and sleeping compared to a natural animal, you know, where they, they don't need that as much. And so um, think about it. It's like if you were to think of your body like um, a government, right? If you put 75% of your energy towards education, then now you've only got 25% of those funds going to actually defense. So it's kind of that, that same model when you think about it like that. So let me see where I'm at as well. Okay, yes. And, and that's also, again, how we kind of suffered. Because again, think about it. Back in the day, we weren't we didn't have these nice cozy houses and all all that we had there so think about it if we were to go out in the jungle yeah we would be smarter than a chimpanzee but that chimpanzee can also rip you apart like those are some really big differences so then he even talks more about the evolution of man itself and how even how oh you started standing upright compared to a hunch and how your um, thumbs start operating more and just again even how we started to become more of social creatures because we understood that that became a strength as well because again we did have bigger brains so we did have you know a certain way where we can start putting things together together and like say for example when it came to like even what we would eat back in the day where it's like okay if we all out there living in the jungle with all the animals right the lions attack a gazelle and they eat first and then the hyenas go and eat the scraps and now the humans come and now they eat in bone marrow and you know again just kind of thinking of, again about how evolved we came from there so one of the biggest things that really Flip the switch for us as homo sapiens in, in this theory is the domestication of fire and how that helped us to become the bigger predators um, because now we can set fires. We can go and burn down a whole field. And not only is that now eliminating the uh, protection that you usually see lions hiding up in the trees or in the grass, but now it's also cooking them if they got if they got stuck there. And so now we are able to also cook food. So a lot of those different things that we weren't able to eat once upon a time, we had become able to eat because now that cooked food is killing parasites and different things like that. So again, thinking about, man, how far our bodies change just with those kind of things, how, how much some, something as simple as fire now changes our way of life. <clears throat> and then just moving on to the next, which is the tree of knowledge mutation, which I thought was um, an interesting way to call that mutation. But that tree of knowledge, it changed the way that we communicate. Like, think about it. Apes have different calls to warn about an eagle versus a lion. <clears throat> and so 
and how you could see that is say for example they gave in this analogy where they would play one recording of a chimpanzee making like you know one of their calls and they will all look up as if they're warning that oh an eagle is coming <clears throat> or they would play another sound and then they will all you know go and maybe run and hide like a lion was coming so think about it what kind of advantage does it have when we can now have an actual language so instead of us being able to say run a lion now we can say oh i seen a lion chasing a bison at the river we could put a whole sentence together and now that can help us also strategize better and again that also even moved it more into us being social creatures and understanding that our power started to come in numbers and having each other's backs and being able to strategize being able to hear one person fair warn about their journey and then prepare for the next and then so with that though, not only did talking enable us to talk about things that did exist, but it also enabled us to talk about things that don't exist, right? And so of course, then they got to start coming for the religious aspect, right? And they say, you know, talking about things that, that don't really exist, for example, like God, which is something that you more so believe in, but it's not like a physical entity, right? And so, for example, an analogy that they made, which was you can go into the forest, like say you tell somebody that they can go into the forest looking for four fairies and unicorns, you'd have a less chance of being successful than if somebody told you to go into the forest looking for mushrooms and berries. And so when I hear that kind of stuff, I'm always just like, yeah, I, I can definitely understand that perspective because it's just like how I was watching one video today where it's like the manipulation of the map, you know, making certain you know continents look bigger than another again to manipulate and kind of throw you off track so you know if you kind of again tell people to go look for one thing then you know they're missing what's actually right in front of them in a sense so but with that being said the communication and intimate relationships also allow for better ways to organize more of us together versus animals so after that it became more of like 30 people would get together and then break off and then after that that's also where you get these um fictional myths that were allowed more to bring people together such as like the catholic church or even two lawyers because and not even you know looking at the religious aspect but even the kind of things that we make up such as laws right because who made these laws other than somebody that said that they're laws and now because a group of lawyers got together now they're um, enforcing the law and then get a group of police officers to reinforce the law you know and start doing these things again that are belie make believe in a sense right and and so when you one of the ways that they really said it that made me be like okay I can understand that is when it's where let me get to that quote here which is let me see Okay, yeah, it says living in a dual reality, which is trees, rivers, and lions versus corporations, nations, and God. And again, that's when I was like, okay, I understand that point that they're trying to make across from that. You know, that dual reality of that physical, again, we can see the trees, we can see the river, we can see the lions, which again is trees, that's like our protection, that's our home, that's, you know, that's where we build and, and congregate are the rivers that's where we get our water that's where we get food and um lions you know those that are out after us those that we may be after as well compared to again something else that could be again created like corporations even llc's you know llc's come about this is something that again we all create and then um also debt legal situations because those legal situations that come with it that's not why we now have llc's because now you have to protect yourself and again all of these different holes that kind of be created in order to you know build up this it's like <laughs> the way i was thinking about it, it's like when you tell one lie and then got to tell another lie to keep the lie going right so it's like that's how we can get so far down this corporate rat rabbit hole as well and so, but again, when it comes down to it, it really just, again, shows how we go from evolving from this simple 
organism that's just living outside with all the other animals to now we've now you know become this animal with a brain that's burning down the the forest in order to protect ourselves um and now we are congregating and now we're you know creating beliefs and creating more and more beliefs and again when we look at that and how far we've evolved it makes you think how much more evolving do you have to do to achieve what you're trying to achieve even us like right before we were or maybe right when i started this podcast how i just was saying if we are moving into this scientific revolution and this digital revolution and all these different kind of revolutions that they are plainly putting out there that's happening what will it take for us to evolve and look at us evolving we were meeting on discord for about a year now you know whether that was on instagram live or on you know discord just in chat or on discord on voice chats in different ways and now here we are evolving into the metaverse you know continuing to think about based on your goals and what you have going on what is it going to take for you to evolve even further in order to achieve that so with that being said i would love to try to hear from the group um china i know your your mic isn't very active so if you want to drop your note um with just a response to as what will it take you to evolve uh to accomplish one of your goals or who you're becoming feel free um but zay did you want to kick it off if not i can definitely keep going for sure i could definitely um kick it off i did write something so this is just written so if i sound like a robot i'm sorry i'm gonna make it sound like i'm just talking um so the question was what does it take for you to evolve um for me personally i have to envision what it is i want to evolve in my life and then take small steps to embody the big steps or the actual vision i set for myself so so usually um when I have like a goal, I want to say, I want to keep it to evolve, like evolving, but basically evolving is anything. You can, just your mindset, your health, yes. anything can evolve. So just, um, intentionally putting in the work to evolve, like figuring out what I need to change and how I'm going to get there and make sure I'm mastering those baby steps before the big steps um, is how I'm right now learning how to evolve as a person. Um, and also the way I evolve is I basically have to like uh, how we talked about we needed to take a little time off. That's how I evolve in by myself with like silence and like just focusing or having tunnel vision or what I want to do to evolve. So I need to have like all the noise away from me, which <laughs> includes like people, things, everything. I just needed to shut off so then I can turn this brain on to focus on, on like the big things in my life that I envision for myself and just to keep on pushing towards there. Um, and no. yeah, that, that's, that's no. literally that's what I'm doing now. So <laughs> I don't know what else to say, but that's how I'm evolving right now. Like just like, like keep on mastering the baby steps because right. the baby steps get to the big steps. So that's very much a, a, a lesson that keeps on getting put to me. So that's if somebody it. hears this and that's what they want to do to evolve, please. Master the baby steps. The big steps will come. Look the baby steps. Master those things. Don't think that they're there for no reason. They are very there for a reason. Sometimes we want to we envision something and we're trying to go so fast to it that we just run past all the little steps that would have literally helped us and guided us. And sometimes um, it doesn't work out. And we think that, oh, I did everything. You missed them little baby steps. And redirection also is a good um way to evolve too sometimes we look at redirection as a bad thing and sometimes it's very much necessary in our life so you know take redirection and i want to say redirection i don't want to say like elves or anything like you know i want to say redirect yourself so that you get back on the path to your goals and your vision to keep evolving Wow. Uh, that's my piece <laughs> i love that piece that was such a great piece Zay. especially with how you said you know master those little steps mastery is definitely one of those books that's coming on our book list real real soon because mastery is so important especially when like you said mastering those little steps man it always be those little steps where it's like i swore i did everything right but you didn't because you missed over that one little step that would have had it right uh-huh. you know and and it just comes down to even paying attention and slowing down 
down and you know taking the time to like you said master that focus on where you at right there and know that you're going to get to that step you know and so that is a great point right. especially also when it, when you talked about evolving and it being a mindset that has to continue to evolve like we like i was just saying you know in that synopsis on our cognitive revolution as homo sapiens, our mind and our brains is our most powerful tool out here in this space. That's why everything is always modeled after the human brain. A computer is modeled after the human brain because of how powerful it is. <clears throat> so even understanding that and having the power to shift your mindset and take control of your mind, that's a great tool to have and to be evolving to and understanding that you want to continue to evolve your mind and to have control over of the of it of that nature so thank you so much for sharing that and uh with me i would say mine is kind of along the same thing when it comes to like what it takes for me to evolve uh, and mine is i feel like just listening like you know we we have five senses and you know i we were born with these five senses and they always say you know it's like a blind person if they're blind then all their other senses strengthen right so i wear glasses obviously so with mine it's like i understand that my vision although i think my vision is like the vision sometimes it's not you know so even taking the time to take a step back study more listen more so that i can really get that full picture with me i feel like what i have to do in order to evolve is really take the time to evolve all of my senses you know especially my listening because i know my vision isn't the best and i know if i combine those two that's how i then get that perfect vision you know and that's with me again seeing those plain signs like oh i wear glasses so although i'm a visionary and i feel like i can literally envision the future like that's so raven type of vibe like I wear glasses though so that was like a very plain sign to me that you can't see that far especially my vision is like negative two negative three like I, I really can't see without my glasses <laughs> so it's like you know but again I've always been a good listener though um, and that's why I, I you know do really well when it comes to talking with people and that's why I even enjoy listening to these bo books compared to reading them because I just absorb things in a better way when I'm listening so you know just understanding that I want to evolve my senses especially starting with listening and that's what will give me that upper hand to have all of my senses firing off and together i feel like that's what it takes for me to evolve into exactly everything else that will then align you know if i can listen to this and then retain it better because even i've seen you post on twitter about you know people not having great memories one of, one of the things my husband always says because he has a photographic memory and he's always like you know it really is just about paying attention like if you you know really focus on kind of paying attention then you will um you know absorb that you will obtain that and you know it will be there and so again it just comes down to understanding like oh listening at the same time as talking or if i'm, I'm telling people oh, i can't talk and text at the same time like if i'm talking i can't do nothing else because i'm going to start losing my train of thought and again when it comes to just understanding how me being able to master those senses then helps me be able to master my own mind because that's what it comes down to us wanting to be able to master our minds and really you know hold that and be able to be in control of that in order to bring into fruition all of this that we envision and can create because that's also you know what we embody as well when it when it, when i was reading this it was one of the funny things when they were like oh yeah you know th those kind of things aren't real because you know nobody was there to tell us and i'm like <clears throat> Well, nobody was there to tell us that none of this stuff is real neither. Every Everybody's out here just telling a story about what they believe based on, you know, what was here before. And so I always like to respect everybody's, like, interpretation of that. And, you know, you hear the messages and not the messengers and pick up what really, you know, kind of aligns with your frequency in, in a sense, uh, on a way that I kind of think about that. So again, me always just trying to elevate myself so that I can, you know, feel something with my hands and, you know, it feels like how it's supposed to feel or hear something and it triggers like it's supposed to or I smell something and, you know, it brings back a memory or, or again, just using all these senses to really help me evolve to the the utmost that I can be. And that's what that um, evolving looks like to me in that simple sense. Or not even simple, because I feel like that was very complex, but in a simple way. <laughs> 
It wasn't. I like how you uh, explained everything. I like the the senses. I was really, really good. I really was because it does help your brain. All of that just helps you strengthen your uh, mentality and your brain. And I was really no seriously. <laughs> it was really good. I like how you did say about memory though. I really do. That's something that I'm evolving as well. Like I need to understand not everybody has. Not everybody has like that. I don't know. I don't want to say a talent because it's really not a talent to remember. But I'm now I'm feeling like it kind of is because I didn't realize at all how many people did not like have good memory like me. I'm like, are you serious? You didn't remember that? And and people would get so offended that I would be like, wow, you don't remember. And I'm, but it was not to try to be like, you know, oh my gosh, you don't. Remember. But it was just taken back like, wow, that yeah. was a core memory for me. You get what I'm saying? Right. So sometimes people don't trauma, anything can mess up somebody's memory. Right. But I've always made it a point. Like I've always been intentional on, I have to remember because I was the oldest of a lot of kids. So I had to remember mm-hmm. with my mom or, you know, somebody to remember me, remember something. I was that person. So that's a strong suit for me. I can remember a lot of things and a lot of people can't. So, yeah, right. that was, that was very much thank you adding that because that's something I need to evolve in as well understanding that everybody has the same you know memory or same right and it's because it's because of like you just said think about all the things that it that takes to make a person their environment the trauma the thing like their core memories like you said all of those little things that make them who they are and they're people from before that you know maybe they're they come from family that has alzheimer's that really come from a long line of you know messed up memories and that comes from you know a long line of like Maybe they've had alcoholism in their family for a while, you know, and different things like that that can really change the genetics of their mind, you know, and those kind of things that, again, when it comes down to that knowledge of self and understanding that, because I, I just look at those things as barriers or, or hurdles more than anything, not barriers, you know, and it's like, okay, you understand that that's a hurdle, so you do what you got to do to get past that you know and evolve past that so again that's why i I say you know the simple sense on okay i can think i i got good vision but i can clearly see i wear glasses so what that's my hurdle so in order for me to see though because i could put my glasses on and i can see so it's not like it's something that i can't do it's just you know i need to make sure that i have all the tools in order for me to be able to do that and everybody you know has to look forward within because even like I said when it came to the memory it just takes more focus you know more being in that moment for those that may not have that memory (laughs) my husband like I said he said he got a photographic memory so he's always trying to tell me like oh you gotta be like you know absorbing the sounds while you're looking at something but not having too many sounds so that you can like pull that memory in that kind of way and it's like okay I got you but you know again it just takes challenging your mind to do that wanting to actually do that as well and under again understanding that hurdle and not being afraid to go and jump over that hurdle you know preparing and if you might fall go try again maybe you got to do some workouts you know one of the things that we talked about last book club again was if you were working out to go and you know become again some type of track athlete it would take you working out and preparing for that so when we're talking about shifting our mindset it's not something that's just gonna happen it takes working out it takes these kind of meetings where we're reading books and hearing the tools because even this you know the a brief history of his a uh, brief history of humankind like how we are using those little gems to talk about how we will be evolving as an individual so that we can be a better individual in this whole body that we're all connected to you know and those kind of things matter um china i'm not sure if you wanted to try your mic or if you were going to drop a note or if not if not it's cool you can give it thumbs okay can you am i coming in clear you sound better so you could definitely take it away okay um uh just based off like what i was like picking up um from everybody I recently, um, oh, you're turning into a super I robot. Just, <laughs> <laughs> I have high hopes. Like, wait, I think you sound good. Oh, man. Man, she oh. 
Well, no problem, China. If you want, if you want, like I said, if you want to drop a sticky note in here, I can definitely read it all. Otherwise, y'all already know these book clubs be recorded. Y'all see me in the metaverse, and this is open for women to join the conversation. Leave your thoughts in the comments. Drop in your and drop in the comments what it's going to take for you to evolve. Because again, you can hear how it takes each of us to hear what we think it takes for us to evolve, and then how we can all benefit each other. And I'm just kind of talking for a bit just to see if China going to drop a sticky note before we wrap it up. Um, but China, if you're not, maybe hit the thumbs up, and then I'll wrap it up even quicker. Um, otherwise, I'll kind of just wait to see your note pop in here. But yes, it takes all of us in order to grow from each other and better each other. That's why we even say, you know what, we're going to come every sing every other week or twice a month and read these books together and talk about what we think about them so that we can really not only use these tools but apply them and start to really evolve from there and i think again we've, we've been doing this for almost a year now and look how far we've all come look at us in the metaverse you all are on your way to building your own portals doing your own things and you know we're still evolving we are we understand that this is a journey and we're not afraid of being on that journey and we want to continue to evolve to be that best of ourselves so i definitely appreciate you all for being here if y'all don't know we're about to go hop into another spatial party that tokyo white is having it's like a whole fashion show party about to be a vibe so if you want to connect with us make sure you follow us on i guess you could follow us at the underscore raw underscore dow the grand book club doesn't really have any social medias or you can always hit me up mocaso underscore of underscore nfts that's usually where i share some stuff about the book club as well but stay tuned because these are going to be live every what is it every second and fourth wednesday our dates they get a little uh moved around this month but hey it happens and we we are not afraid to evolve and we're going to do what we got to do and still take the time to link up so i definitely appreciate you all for taking the time to listen to this replay and to zay and china for being here to actually be a part of the conversation i'll talk to you guys again to wrap up sapiens and a brief history of humankind and then y'all see me diving into the psychology of money next month and that'll be a wrap for season three. If you've missed any of the replays, they are all on our podcast, um, The Grand Book Club, and all on Raw TV YouTube. So feel free to listen to them. We've read so many incredible books, has so many incredible conversations with so many amazing women. And y'all already know I always say that we just getting started, but we ain't nowhere close to done because we ain't just getting started, but we ain't nowhere close to done. So again, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Peace.